All right, we now turn to Green Bay where news broke last week that reigning MVP Aaron Rodgers does not want to return to the Packers. Green Bay management is obviously concerned with the team president, GM, and head coach meeting with Rodgers this offseason. Uh, there are believed to be a myriad of reasons Rodgers is not happy, but one of them can likely be traced back to last year's draft when the Packers surprised many by trading up and drafting another quarterback in Jordan Love. Multiple teams have reportedly inquired about Rodgers' availability, but the Packers say they, they have no plans to make a trade. A drink we talked extensively about Rodgers, Love, and the Packers organization last year around this time. What do you think happens moving forward? I I don't think Aaron Rodgers will be the quarterback that takes that he he won't be the starting quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. I don't think <clears throat> it's possible that Aaron Rodgers won't wear a Green Bay Packers um, jersey again. Um, unfortunately, when you paint yourself into a certain, it, I mean anything is fixable. Like they can't fix this, but I I feel like the longer this go. Aaron Rodgers ain't Russell Wilson. And what I mean by that is, Russell Wilson, he aired out his grievance. He did all that. But at the end of the day, Russell Wilson ain't a diva either. So he he said what he said, did what he did, but he also went back to the team. was like, listen, this is why I'm frustrated. Won't won't. And they seem to be trying to figure something out. Aaron Rodgers is a different ball of wax. He out here hosting Jeopardy. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Dana, you know, his. I ain't gonna get in his personal business, but he he does a lot, and he has a pretty you know prima donna attitude. And I said this when we talked about this same segment last year. At some point, the organization gonna get tired of hearing like you complain or you coming at us. You're a superstar talent. I got it, but listen, this ain't the NBA. This here's the NFL. No player is ever gonna be bigger than the Shield. And furthermore, no player will ever be as big as the team that they play for. You got to understand. You are Aaron Rodgers, the starting quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. It's not the other way around. And they just, for all the, the positive that Aaron Rodgers has done, it's like people are only going to deal with so much of that. Like, for I had, a, I had an example in my head. But for like, how great, I don't know, um, Antonio Brown, prime example. For how, now, he acts the fool, but look how great Antonio Brown was playing as a wide receiver. You had to separate his greatness as a football player from his character. You just had to because he was doing so much. No one ever said, dang, Antonio Brown is trash as a player because he's not. You'll be, you'll be lying through your TV if you say he was trash. But if you said Antonio Brown, yeah, he's a terrible person. Like, he ain't a good person. You would be factual. So, I say that to say this. Aaron Rodgers is a great quarterback. But his, I just feel like he didn't ruffle so many feathers in that organization. They're just like, like we don't care that you're great no more. They're like, okay, you upset. Whatever. We're going to try to get you out of here. You know? And I, and I hear the GM and stuff saying, oh, he's not on the trade block. He's definitely on the trade. It's Aaron Rodgers. I know he's on the trade block. Because he done told you 22 times he ain't coming back. He don't want to play for you no more. Um, so, with that said, I think Jordan Love would be the starting quarterback for the Packers next year. I think he'll be starting this first. Um, I think the more interesting thing throughout all this is, one, Greens Bay's draft afterwards. Their draft was even more disrespectful. They showed this, this draft year that, they just over Aaron Rodgers. Last year, I thought they were showing it. This year is really, hey, we over it. Because he just won the MVP, and you still didn't give him what he, what he was asking for. You still didn't try to, like, give him truly what he need to get over the hump to beat the Tom Brady Bucks, uh, to beat the, you know, the San Francisco. Like, you didn't give him exactly what you gave him. Uh, but then, did you really give it to him, or did you give it to Jordan Love? Because it's not like this. all this is probably – going to be helping Jordan Love more than Aaron Rodgers at, hit, at this point in his career. So, with that, <clears throat> with all that said, yeah, I, I think Aaron Rodgers' time is done. He, first ballot Hall of Famer. I think he'll get his number retired at some point on that team. But this might be over. And it, it is what it is. It was over for Joe Montana at some point. It was over for Tom Brady at some point. It was over for um, Peyton Manning at some point. Like, it, it happens. It, I don't think you have to look at the player and say, oh, you know, 
he's no longer a Hall of Famer, he's no longer a great, he's no longer elite because he changed his teams. That's not necessarily true. We was talking about we was talking about Peyton Manning earlier. That was a prime example. He went to another team, was just as great as he was with the Colts. Now, he might have broke all the records when he was a Colt, but he got it done when he was with Denver. Like, and we're gonna remember both things. It's not we're not gonna remember one without the other. This ain't Jordan with the Wizards. We're gonna remember all of it. So, um, I just think Aaron Rodgers' attitude, and like I told you earlier, man, I, I do contribute some of the of the attitude that Aaron Rodgers have to just probably the way he got brought into the NFL with um, Brent Favre. I'm pretty sure Brent Favre didn't help. You know, we, we know Brent Favre was not happy about them drafting Aaron Rodgers, and he made it clear, like, I'm not helping him develop nothing. Y'all drafting him is y'all problem. Aaron Rodgers kind of had that attitude too. And like I told you earlier, I think the problem with Aaron Rodgers is this. It's not that he's upset. It's just the way he handles things. He's... He, he just grinds everybody gears so much that now they're just like over it. Like, even though he's right about this situation, it doesn't matter. It's just like a person that you hear just like, oh, they get on your nerves so much. They might be making total sense. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, it, it's like a peer in, you know what I'm saying? A peer that you got. You, if you're a laid back cat, you handle things a certain way, but you got this peer that just rah, 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 all day. Eventually you like, He's not wrong, but I don't want to hear that crap either. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's what's happening with Aaron Rodgers right now. Like, you you about to be out of your prime. I, I know you won the MVP, but you about to be out of your prime. We didn't got the good, the best years out of you. This is a business. No, let's make no mistake. We didn't got the best years out of you. So if you want to go, we'll try to find something suitable. But last but not least, did I say if you want to go, we're going to find something suitable? I think that is going to be the problem. What do you get back for Aaron Rodgers? Yeah. What is enough for the reigning MVP and one of the best talents we've seen on the quarterback in the history of the NFL? What is enough? And I think that's the problem. So, I, you know, we'll see if they can make that work, but I don't think he's starting quarterback. I think starting quarterback would be Jordan Love. Yeah, uh, very based on, you know, stuff we talked about pretty extensively uh, this time around last season. I don't think either one of us are surprised that we're here now. Um, Green Bay, you know, old Gutekunst up there, Brian Gutekunst, you know, how, what, how do you say it? I, I, this guy, this guy didn't done it. Um, he botched the draft last year, um, you know, based on, I don't, Ain't nothing. I don't think there was anything I saw that blew me away this year in the draft. Um, you know, we chronicled about last year. They needed help a wide receiver. They needed help on the defensive line. They needed to get tougher, really, on both on you know at both lines of scrimmage. And you know, essentially, almost you know, we talk about New the Pelicans, how same team. You know, they, they can't even make the playoffs. Green Bay kind of, in, in a way, very similar to how they were last. I think they was a little bit better in certain areas. Um, I think they was a little bit better running the ball. Kenny Clark had a much better year helping the defensive line be better. But, I mean, same wide receivers. You know, it was Devontae Adams doing everything. Yeah, you could sprinkle in Scantling a little bit. Uh, Alan Lazard, a little bit of Alan Lazard. We got him. But, I mean, it just – it felt like they needed a little bit more. Aaron Rodgers needed just a little bit more to get him over the hump. And also, I mean, we can't forget Mike Pettin and Kevin King, whatever they're doing at the, right before halftimes with, you know, Scotty Miller running by people, you know. So, but I, I really think, like, I'm still on the side of Aaron Rodgers. I don't understand what the Green Bay Packers are doing. And I do – there is, I think there is some merit to what you say about just a guy, a, a certain type of personality just rubbing you the wrong way. And but we talked about some of this last year, how like it's so easy to see how Aaron Rodgers would like take offense to that draft pick because a little bit sensitive. He's a guy that get in his feelings, you know, comes out in the media and says cryptic things that just have people scratching their head and your teammates and your coaches like, huh, what is, what's going on? But I mean, ain't like they didn't know, they didn't know this stuff. And you also yeah. have, there, 
as much as we don't, I, well, I don't like it. And especially in the world of sports, as we've seen, there are, depending on your level of talent, there are different standards. Antonio Brown got to get away with a whole lot of nonsense because he was Antonio Brown. He was that great. It's a, it's a little bit different here because I don't think there's nothing grossly character flaws and not cutting up, getting in all sorts of trouble. So, I mean, if you, if, if you're staying out of the headlines to that degree and the guy's just had his best season who, and I, and I said this last year around this time, I was like, this is going to motivate Aaron Rodgers and he's going to come out and we're going to see the best of him. And we did 48 touchdowns, five interceptions. He wins an MVP his third, but don't, it don't mean he didn't forgot. And you, you know, he made some comments last year talking about like, you know, always wanted to remain with one team, but now, you know, I don't know if that's a reality anymore. And, you know, based on, based on what I'm read, it's really, it's him and the GM. That's the problem. The GM. And it, I just read something. I just read a, a report that came out about an hour ago. They got a source came out and, you know, was sharing like we talk about group chats, sharing a group chats to where Aaron Rodgers was referring to his GM as Jerry, Jerry Krause. Krause. Jerry Krause. And we know like we know how Jerry Krause got painted in the last dance, fair or unfair. So that that's that's obviously not a great look. That's not something you want to see from you know the guy who's supposed to be leading your football team, your quarterback. But I when you have a guy to this degree of this talent, you know, you, you gotta, I think you gotta be a little bit better as an organization. It almost, it mirrors, it's not, I don't think it's completely New York Jets, but we talked, we, we talked about this with the Jets and like a guy like Jamal Adams, who like Jamal Adams got, was getting frustrated about things that were happening with the GM, like putting on a trading block and oh, I thought we were gonna do an extension, these type of things. You gotta know your players and you gotta recognize that we live in a day and age where people are different. People take offense to the slightest little thing and, you know, get mad about everything. And like, if, you know, think about the other, the other part of this, like if Aaron Rodgers, if this is indeed the end of Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, this about Brian Gutekus and Matt LaFleur don't have a, don't have a big future there mm -hmm. because I don't know what you get in return for them. And I don't think maybe I could be wrong. But I'm not excited about I'm not excited about Jordan Love leading this team. Well, not yet because we we're comparing Jordan Love to a Hall of Famer, a first ballot Hall of Famer at that. We don't know exactly. I mean, that's just like most Dallas fans wasn't happy about that Prescott when Tony Romo went down, and rightfully so. Tony Romo hold every record for the Dallas Cowboys as for a quarterback. This dude ain't gonna come in and take over for Tony Romo now. What four years later, five years later, this dude the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. So and I'm still not crazy about him. <laughs> and and most people are not, <laughs> but I guess Jerry is, and that's the only thing that matters. I get, it. I get right? it. I get it though. That's that's but, fair. You don't know until the guy steps in, but right. I mean, there there also is a difference between Aaron Rodgers and Tony Romo, you know. So uh, right. And it, right. you know, to this, this is if this is indeed going to be a situation where he don't play with the Packers and. I don't know. I don't think this is a situation unlike any other at the quarterback position. I think it's even like, think about the quarterbacks that Rodgers is connected to, like not right now, but like, you know, the early part of the, of this decade, it really was four quarterbacks who like were front and center in the NFL. It was Rodgers, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, and Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. Yep. None of them, you know, all the other three, remember Brees had, um, the, uh, the shoulder, I believe it was, that led to him going to New Orleans. Um, Peyton Manning had the neck issues. That led him going to Denver. Uh, in the end, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, they didn't see eye to eye no more. Tom Brady exits. But it was all via free agency. Like, all these teams, they they just they split. They said, all right, we're, we're going several ways. Aaron Rodgers still got several years on his contract. And for him to be at this point, you know, I, I just, I, the Packers, I just look at them and like, man, how, how could you let the, how could you let this happen? I put this more on the Packers than Aaron Rodgers. I think I, I do. I, I agree with you. I think the Packers think they look at the landscape of the NFL and they say, 
I think we got the leverage here. Even though Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers, you think, first of all, they're probably going to outprice most teams because it's Aaron Rodgers. Then secondly, you're going to have to find a team that no crap needs a quarterback and then needs a quarterback that bad where they're willing to give up the form. And I think the, the organization, like, we have the leverage here. How many teams need a quarterback first? And then how many teams willing to give up right. whatever we many, ask? And how, and how many teams have that form? Yeah. Right. And so when you kind of look at all that, I think the leverage is in the organization. Now, does it make them look bad? Yeah, but this good cat, this cat was looking bad for years now. Like, <laughs> like He was looking real bad on this show last year. You, you know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> I don't think the whole looking bad thing, it is what it is. Go ahead, keep him coming, like, as far as he, he's concerned. But I, I do think they have the leverage when it comes to moving him, but just because who he is, what you want from him, and if a team is willing to make those necessary movements to get him. Um, but like you said, is, is the timing off? Yes, because you, you probably could have had a Super Bowl by now, an additional Super Bowl. You probably could have at least been in a additional Super Bowl. So I hope the juice is worth the squeeze. But I, I you know, like like I said, I'm just that type of person. Like, okay, I got it that you good. I don't want to hear that all the time. I just listen. You know what? I, I might have to just cut off my face despite my nose because this is getting ridiculous. Like I don't want to hear it no more. <laughs> and I just feel like that's kind of where Green Bay at with it, the organization anyway. Real quick, where do you think? Where do you think if if they were to make a trade, where do you think the best spot is? Okay, so we talked about your boys earlier. I, I think that's a possibility. It's Carolina. It, it got to be a team where they're in limbo with who's gonna be the starter. That's why I like Denver because they got they're gonna have something going on. Carolina, they're gonna figure out who's gonna be the starter. If Chicago didn't draft Justin Fields, I'll be saying Chicago. Um, but it's definitely got to be a team one that don't have an entrance starter. Um, hey, maybe nah, I ain't gonna say. I was gonna say maybe maybe it, New England. Nah, man, that, that's taking it too far. <laughs> but <laughs> but like seriously, just one of them teams where you don't have either a young quarterback that you drafted or you know an entrance starter. You know who could get him? I think who could get him? And that I would just trade the quarterback I got now. I would just be like, hey. We'll give you Matt Ryan to be a backup. You give us Aaron Rodgers. I, I'll take him. If I was Atlanta, I would try to get him down there. Because he's de- he better than Matt Ryan. Yeah. And he's going to have the weapons there in Atlanta. I guarantee you, you'll win three more games with Aaron Rodgers on the center rather than Matt Ryan. I'm just putting it out there. But to answer your question, team like Chicago, um, I'm not Chicago, teams like Denver, teams like Carolina, maybe a, a dark horse like Atlanta. When something like that, that's where I would see him land. I think I think Denver would be. You know, I'm getting some. I, I, it don't normally happen, but I'm giving some. I'm getting some home cooking tunnel vision. Where like, yeah, just go to Denver. Peck Manning Volume Two. I love it. <laughs> but I'll give you. I'll give you a couple more interesting ones. Washington. I think well, they definitely need a quarterback, and right, right, you know right. we talk about it, like there's a lot to like on that team. Like think about it. they were winning games pretty consistently when it, when they could get Alex Smith healthy. Aaron Rodgers going to do a lot more than Alex Smith, right? Um, and I think one more, just because it is interesting. Minnesota, get Kirk Cousins out of there, and Aaron right. Rodgers in that division. Minnesota, so Brett Favre did that at one point, play for right. Minnesota. Yep. Minnesota and Green Oof. That would in a heart, that'd be, in that'd a be heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Give get I don't think they sold they just paying Kirk Cousins because they gotta pay somebody. But <laughs> uh, they'll get rid of him in a heartbeat for Aaron Rodgers. In a heartbeat. But it's up. Most most certainly we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll keep our eyes on this one. <laughs>